Hello everybody, my name is Ilya. And my name is Tyler. Together we make up Kavre, a couple that loves to play board games. And today we'll be teaching you how to play Perch. Woo! Perch is a game designed by Doug Hetrick. Its illustrations are done by Anna Block and it's published by Inside Up Games, who helps sponsor this video. Now in Perch, you'll take a roll of a flock of birds, trying to kick out the other birds and taking control of all the land there is to be. Evil, evil, evil. Now this game is a prototype, so everything you see here may be subject to change, but let's head on over to the table and teach you how to play Perch. As always, you'll begin by setting up. First, you'll assemble your homestead. You'll separate the location tiles by their backs, basic, special, and woodland creature. Then you'll set up the game based on your player count. For a two to three player game, you'll draw three basic, two special, and three creature location tiles. You'll shuffle them and arrange them like this. For a four player game, you'll draw four basic, two special, four creature location tiles, shuffling and arranging them like this. And finally, for a five player game, you'll draw five basic, three special, and five creature location tiles, shuffling and arranging them like this. There's a list of recommended locations for your first game. Today we'll show you our four player game with the recommended locations. As a note, a two player game looks slightly different, with a third player's components being used to simulate a bird brained player. You'll now check your locations. Any location tiles with nest icons, you'll place the corresponding amount of nests on those location tiles. For each creature location tile in play, you'll gather the matching card and standee. You'll place these within reach of all players. The remaining nests and creatures can be returned to the box. You'll then place the fountain board within reach of all players based on the player count. You'll place the round marker in the round one space, bird houses and lightning tokens equal to the number of players on the round four and five spaces. Each player will then receive their flock, 28 birds of the same color, and a scoring token which you'll place on the fountain board. Lastly, you'll select your hidden objective. You'll first sort the cards so that they correspond to your player count. Shuffle and deal two cards to each player. Simultaneously, players will decide one objective to keep, the other will be returned to the box. You'll choose a first player, and you're now ready to play. In Perch, you'll place your own and your opponent's birds strategically, aiming to score the most points by controlling locations and migrating to the fountain. The game is played in five rounds. Each round is divided into four phases. Migrate, Recruit, Perch, and Upkeep. Let's go over them. During the Migrate phase, two birds from each player's flock are added to the migration bag. Keep in mind the location tiles, as some will allow players to place more than just two birds into the migration bag. It is now the recruit phase. In the recruit phase, you'll shake the migration bag, and in turn order, each player will draw two birds from the migration bag, and take two birds from their own flock. This will leave each player with four birds, two of their own, and two from either their own or other players' flocks. The purge phase. Here in turn order, you'll send one of your recruited birds to any location and you may also execute one bonus action each turn. The order is up to you. You'll repeat this until all players have placed their birds. Now let's look at the tiles and perch conditions. First, only one bird may be placed at a time. Birds may only perch on location tiles that cannot be placed directly onto the fountain or plaza. There's also no limit to the number of players or birds at the location. Birds of the same flock must be stacked together, and a stack can only contain birds of the same color. You can use a clear base to stabilize your flock if they're getting rowdy. A bird may be placed in the nest if it's unoccupied, or if there's a nest already occupied by bird or birds of the same flock. A nest counts as plus one bird for the flock that occupies it. Now let's look at the bonus actions. Number one, activate a woodland creature. If you gain control of a woodland creature in the upkeep phase, you may activate its ability. Only one woodland creature may be activated per turn and each woodland creature may only be activated once per round. Woodland creatures often help birds move to the fountain. Number two, build a birdhouse. In rounds four or five, you may use your bonus action to place a birdhouse atop any stack of birds. Once it has been placed, no birds may be added to or removed from that stack. The stack will not be affected by woodland creatures or lightning strikes, and a birdhouse will count as plus one bird for the flock it's placed on. Lastly, number three, zap a bird. In round five, you may use a bonus action to remove one bird from any location using your lightning token. The player whose bird was zapped will place their bird in the fountain. No, you may also zap your own bird here. Now it's time for the upkeep phase. 
First, you'll score each location. Scoring will occur at the end of each round. Starting from the leftmost column of locations, you'll tally scores for each location, top to bottom, left to right. Locations are scored by awarding points to the player whose flock has the most, second most, and third most birds at the location. Remember, nests and birdhouses count as plus one bird in the flock. Here's an example. Blue here would score three points, red will score five, green will score two, and yellow will not score points. Now how do ties work? Well, ties cancel. If two or more flocks are tied, the players are not awarded points. On top of that, they remove scoring opportunities for other players in that location. After scoring, you'll redistribute the turn order token so that the player with the highest score is first, followed by the player with the second highest score, and so on. In a tie, the player at the bottom of the stack is considered ahead as they arrived at that score first. Then you'll trigger any location that activates during upkeep. Some locations will activate after scoring. You'll trigger the locations in the same order as we scored them, top to bottom, left to right. Generally, two things could happen when a location is triggered. A player gains control of a creature, or birds are moved to the fountain or plaza. When gaining control of a creature, you'll take the matching creature's card and place a creature in the play area. The first time it's placed, it'll go on its home tile. When control shifts, you'll simply pass the creature card without changing the location of the creature in the playing area. In ties, nothing happens. The creature is set aside. Birds can also be sent to the fountain or plaza here. Generally, the player whose bird was moved is the one to place it on the fountain. When a bird is placed on the fountain, it must be supported. This means that before placing a bird on an empty perch spot, the perch spots beneath that are connected must be filled. The plaza is simply below. There is no limit to the amount of birds in the plaza. You'll now advance the round marker. If you advance the round to four or five, each player will receive either a birdhouse or a lightning token for their use. Now you'll keep playing for five rounds. At the end of the fifth round, once the last upkeep phase is complete, you're now ready to award endgame bonuses. First, you'll move any birds remaining in the migration bag to the plaza. Then you'll refer to the fountain board and award game and bonus points for the following. 10 points for the largest flock in any location. If tied, no points are awarded. Three points per creature you control. Points from the fountain. Each bird corresponds to points based on the level it sits. And finally, birds in the plaza are worth one point each. Lastly, you'll add up the points from your hidden objective if you've reached it. You'll compare the scores and the player with the most points wins. And that's Perch. Thank you so much for watching our how to play video. If you have any questions, you can hit them in that comment box down below. We'll be happy to answer them. Also, feel free to check out the game on Kickstarter. So you can hit that link, that crowdfunding link, learn more about the game, see what everybody else is saying because mm -hmm. Perch is pretty fun. Yeah, and you can decide for yourself whether or not you'll want to play this game. If you did like this video though, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button if you're new here because we make weekly board game content. Until next time though, we'll see you later. Have a Bye. good one.